That is quite brilliant news for us. That is a Sunray log burner and it's chucking out 10 kilowatts of heat. I don't really want to get too close because as you imagine it's quite spectacular uh, amount of heat. Um, but it did come with quite a few problems I'll try and explain. Um, the pipe at the back is uh, English because it's an English log burner. Well probably made somewhere anyway. But it's two English specs. Uh, but there's an adapter pipe and we have to try and find an uh, English to French uh, adapter tube uh, which wasn't that English easy to find but we did find one and uh, it goes up the chimney and we had to find uh, several metres of pipe to go up our chimney and uh, the chimney sweep he uh, knocked a massive hole in our chimney now I had to go and chop a large plate to fill up that hole and uh, that we after we not that hole we went back to England now uh, behind that is I don't know if you can see that is a rather large hook hanging down which uh, was hanging your pots and pans on which meant that that chimney pipe can't sit next to the wall which um, made it's very difficult when you're poking the uh, pipe up the chimney to sort of like get an angle on that pipe to put it up. Uh, a bit hard to explain but it basically meant that the pipe was sort of rubbing against the chimney as you were trying to shove your pipe up the wall. And when you got four metres of uh, pipe sort of poking up the chimney it made it very difficult to poke your pipe up the chimney. So, yeah, that was quite difficult because the pipe kept sort of trying to slice your fingers off. Um, so that was that. We're trying to clear the uh, brickwork up. I'm getting really close to that fire. And the, uh, don't even see, there's a circle on the wall there. That's what happens when you put a wire brush on uh, your bricks. So you only have to touch the wire brush on the uh, bricks and they clear up really nicely. So, um going to do that uh, one day and you can see the um, the uh, brickwork up here uh, is really really dirty and um, I'm on the top so it's a rather manky looking piece of wood which um, is going to be replaced with a whacking great piece of oak I've got um, so yeah that's all going to be replaced sometime so jobs for the future we got some uh, bits for the inside of this burner um, winging their way over from England because um, they were missing. Um, so yeah, they're coming on uh, their way to this week from England. So yeah, they should be with us uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. So yeah, so hopefully that will help it burn a little bit better. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think it can chuck out an awful lot more heat because it is incredibly hot because it's one degree outside and um, it, this burner can get this room up to, um, well, too hot to breathe basically. So, uh, yeah, really impressed. So, yeah, and we've got the um, ubiquitous uh, um, stove fan on top. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get another one of those to sit the other side as well. So, yeah, so, yeah I'll show you the, um, the little trap door on the outside. Yeah tiny door on the side of the house but there's a little key to get it open but you put a screwdriver in and it doesn't do a single thing it just spins so i've got to work out a way of opening that door and uh i think um yeah butchery is the answer and basically that door isn't big enough to get your brushes in either so yeah i don't know what I'm quite gonna do but there we go job for warmer days because it is one degree out here and it's raining. When the chimney sweep came to install the chimney he knocked a whacking great hole in the top of the fireplace to put his rods up which created a bit of a problem for us because two days later we went back to England. As soon as we came back from England uh, went upstairs to bed because it was only a couple of minutes to midnight and we basically had sort of like uh, about a 16 hour journey and uh, 
went into the bedroom and uh, something flew straight at my face. I thought, that's not a bat, because uh, we've had bats in the house before. I thought, that's rather big. Um, so, fumbled around for the light switch and uh, something still flying around my room. And I thought, that's massive. What the heck is that type thing? And uh, there it was, sitting on top of the door. Um, about, oh no, 40, 50 centimetres tall. Shorted owl. And uh, yeah, big, big owl. And uh, yeah, I said, Mandy, there's an owl in our room. And Mandy's going, a what? I said, there's an owl in our room and uh, anyway she sort of comes upstairs and there it is sitting on top of the door big owl big big owl anyway the owl flies into another um, one of our bedrooms we call it the tool room because it's filled with all our tools and um, yeah poor little blighter well little big poor big blighter is rather you know scared and um, as soon as I go in there, it flies off down the hallway into the uh, the bathroom, and it's sitting on the windowsill in the bathroom. So I try and open the window windowsill for it to go out. Yeah, and it flies up, head butts me straight in the nose. And uh, yeah, this thing's got a wingspan of about a meter and a half. It's it's massive, and uh, so yeah, I go down the other end of the um, the hallway and open the windows. And uh, yeah, this thing's flying around the house and uh, Mandy disappears. She's gone. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, I'm sort of like opening the windows, basically. I'll get the get the bathroom window open and uh, so bathroom windows open one end of the hall, the, um, the, uh, uh, the hallway windows open the other end of the hall. And uh, anyway, this thing's flying around anyway. Uh, it's pitch black in the house, and um, anyway, it's gone, it's disappeared. And uh, anyway, I start looking around for it, and I'm thinking, not in, not in the uh, not in the first bedroom, not in the second bedroom. And uh, I think, oh, good grief, where's it gone now? Anyway, luckily, it must have gone out sort of one of the bed, one of the windows while, while I didn't see it anyway quickly slam all the windows shut and uh, yeah this owl yeah luckily it had gone but yeah it was huge <laughs> absolutely huge so yeah that was part of the uh, installation of the um the log burner uh, excitement yeah dirty grey owl when I first managed to get the doors open on this one we got uh, about two wheelbarrow loads of soot out the front of this one so uh when the chimney man turned up, I was quite expecting him to tell us that this one was going to be an absolute disaster. And uh, what he basically said was the uh, chimney breast upstairs had been messed with because someone had put a, like a boiler straight through the wall and knocked a hole and uh, through the wall and all the bricks had all fallen down into this uh, one downstairs. What we've actually done is we've put in this sort of uh, fire grate starter kit which isn't really big enough to the hole as you can see you know there's big gaps around the side of it and stuff like that uh, so yeah it's not chucking out an awful lot of heat but it basically gets the room up to about 16 17 degrees so uh, yeah it's not great really is it so but yeah it's warm enough for us so yeah we'll make do for now but what we're gonna do is we're gonna not down this sort of fireplace around we think and um we're gonna put in a little sort of pygmy sort of size i don't know what you call it a little petite i think that would be the best description sort of stove rather than a big sort of giant 10 kilowatt one like one next door stove probably sort of like i don't know four kilowatt or something size stove um sitting in front um yeah, and that's the ash what we got out of the chimney, and that's going on our veg, um, not a veg, that is our front garden.
and uh, yeah so that feeds the garden we've got a couple of piles of wood uh, a couple of cord i think it is and we also got a load of wood stored in our barn and we are chopping down all the wood that we are clearing from around our well and that is gradually piling up and these trees will be coming down as well um, when it's not raining obviously and all the trees around that side uh, will be coming down as well they as i said in earlier videos they grow 15 to 20 feet a year all the trees all around there they're all coming down to about that point there and they'll all be replaced with fruit trees all along the back line there um yeah so we'll have plenty of wood each one of these long sort of uh what are they uh 12 15 feet long each one of those uh it's a 20 odd 30 so the odd logs there, each one of those would heat us for a day. So yeah, there's 30 odd logs there. That is a month, month and a half um, of heating there, just in that stack there. So yeah, and then there's another stack there that's in the barn. So that is two months worth of heating. And then we got another tree there. That is basically our winter's worth of heating just in those two trees cool huh and they obviously grow back next year great seeing everybody last week um touring around quick tour around the country um yeah miss you all but loving france sorry guys yeah yeah as usual everyone like and subscribe and ring that bell